Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Jerry and welcome to the Auto Layout video tutorial series. In this series, you're gonna learn what Auto Layout is and what it's used for and how to bend it to your will. So let's get started. To begin, let's talk about what Auto Layout is. Auto Layout is a system that lets you define the user interface for an app using a description of the position of the elements. Before Auto Layout, you would define the user interface for an app by setting the specific X and Y position and then a width and a height for each element. Now, with Auto Layout, you describe the user interface. If you think about how you would describe your user interface to someone without showing it to them, you probably wouldn't say there's a view at x equals 170 and y equals 20 or something like that. You would probably say something more like there's a view taking up the bottom half and two equal views side by side taking up the top half with padding between all of them. In Auto Layout, you can define that description using constraints. Constraints are at the heart of Auto Layout and I'm gonna be talking a lot about them. So just what are these constraints exactly? Constraints are just rules that define an aspect of the position or size of a view. Constraints can be added on just one view, for example, that a view should be 100 points wide, or they can describe the relationship between properties on two views. For example, that a view should be 20 points from the top of its super view, or that the left edges of two views should align. In order for the auto layout system, to be able to completely lay out your interface, all the individual constraints that you define on your layout collectively should fully describe the X and Y position and width and height of each element. If you don't define enough constraints, that's called an ambiguous layout. There are multiple layouts that satisfy the defined constraints. If you provide conflicting constraints, that's called unsatisfiable constraints. There are no layouts that satisfy the defined constraints. In either case, Auto Layout will try to degrade gracefully, but the results will be unpredictable. You'll learn how to identify these situations and how to resolve them by using priorities, adding missing constraints, or removing conflicting constraints. Why use Auto Layout? What is it good for? Well, there are a variety of reasons the layout of your app might need to change at runtime. The user can rotate the device from portrait to landscape, they may be using a different language than the app was designed in, and text may be longer or shorter than originally planned. Apps can be run on multiple screen sizes. The iPhone 4S, 5, 6, and 6 Plus each have a different screen size. And if the app is universal, you have the iPad screen size as well. Speaking of iPad, now with the new multitasking views, there are more screen sizes than ever. Rather than having a different layout to maintain for each of these situations, Auto Layout provides a system where you can describe how your interface should adapt to any of these situations. As an added benefit, it can make changes during development much easier too. This allows us to create very flexible interfaces with a lot less code. For more on how to deal with complex layouts on all those screen sizes, see the Adaptive Layout video series. We've got a lot to cover in this series. In the first three videos, you'll learn the basics of creating constraints using Interface Builder. Then, you'll learn the key concepts of constraint priorities and intrinsic content size. Priorities provide a way to define which constraints should take precedence over others, and are a mechanism for adding some power to your Auto Layout toolbox. Intrinsic content size provides a way for the Auto Layout framework to infer the size of views when their content should define how big they are like, I want this image view to be as big as the image it's displaying. Starting with video 6, you'll learn about creating constraints in code. iOS 9 provides several new ways to make handling constraints in code more concise and readable using UI Layout Guide and NS Layout Anchor. You'll learn about those in video 7. There's also a new UI Stack View control in iOS 9 that makes working with Auto Layout even easier. For more on that, see our UI Stack View video tutorial series. Video 8 covers the visual format language, a way to create multiple constraints in code at once. Video 9 discusses debugging constraints, and we'll wrap it up in video 10, talking about how to animate changes in constraints. Well, like I said, I have a lot to cover, so let's get going. Each video will end with a challenge. Your challenge for now is to keep watching and have fun. I really encourage you to download and try all the challenges. It's the best way to become an auto layout master. 
I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.